I went to the American Heart Association. I went to wellness programs at work. I tried Chantix. I tried um, all kinds of medicine, anti-anxiety medicine. I tried hypnosis, both individual and a group setting. Wow. I mean, I tried everything. Yes, I did. I mean, there's I can't even think of anything I didn't try. I had lozenges, I had gum, I had patches. But then after I finished your program, I didn't need any of that. I just knew what to do. I, I cannot explain it to you, but it was wonderful. And I, I just can't thank you enough. Hi everyone, this is Nasia Davos and welcome to this episode of Ask an X. Every Ask an X episode features an inspiring ex smoker who succeeded with the CPQ method and who shares their personal experience and unique perspective on quitting smoking. The ex I have with me today joined our CPQ program and quit smoking after 44 years on the 19th of September 2021 and she is here to tell you how she did it. Please welcome Teddy Edge. Terry, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Me too. And huge congratulations on your success and for quitting smoking more than a year ago. Thank you so much, Nasia. I couldn't have done it without your wonderful program and the support from the CBQ team and just so much work you put into this program and you've helped so many people and I just want to thank you for that. I thank you for saying that. You're you're very, very welcome. And I'm really happy uh, the program was of help to you. Like we said before, you did it. You put the work. But I am really grateful to have been uh, of help. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing that. Well, you made it so easy. I mean, it was just following instructions. It was just all I had to do was listen to your um, videos and take some notes and do everything that you said as, as you know, closely as I could. And um, it was so easy. It was so easy. And I know that's not everybody's experience, but I, the day after I quit, I remember thinking, when am I going to start feeling the pain? When am I going to start? Oh, wow. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. So it, that's amazing, right? I can't explain it. It was so amazing. I don't know if it was the gradually cutting down and all the instruction, but I have a feeling that it was finally looking at it a different way. I mean, you just, um, it's a head game. And, you know, once I realized that I had control of my thoughts. Everything changed for me. It, it, I cannot tell you. I tried to quit. I started trying to quit um, when I was probably, well, I started smoking when I was 18, right after high school let out. And then I, um, I was sick of it by the time I was yeah, I, I went to the American Heart Association. I went to wellness programs at work. I tried Chantix. I tried um, all kinds of medicine, anti-anxiety medicine. I tried hypnosis, both individual and a group setting. Wow. I mean, I tried everything. Yes, I did. I mean, there's I can't even think of anything I didn't try. I had lozenges. I had gum. I had patches. But then after I finished your program, I didn't need any of that. I just knew what to do. I, I cannot explain it to you, but it was wonderful. Terry, what you're sharing is incredible because it's because you 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 said that you found quitting smoking so easy. And it's 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 not like you haven't tried before or you don't know how it feels like to feel deprived or or um, or struggle but this yeah. time was different if you could pinpoint what was different with the, with the CBQ program compared to your past attempts with all these different uh, things you tried 
Well, with the um, with the gum and with the um, lozenges, it was just like having cigarettes. I mean, when I, 45 minutes were up, I automatically needed another piece of gum or another lozenger. Um, because I would get that feeling in my stomach. And the only way I can describe it is just a, like a tightening, like I, I, just a craving, you know, I knew that my nicotine was depleted in my system and I knew I had to build it back up some way. So, um, you know, I would hurry up and find a way to do that if I was at work or, you know, in a place where I couldn't smoke, that's what I would do. But, but with the CBQ program, that didn't happen anymore. I didn't, I didn't have that feeling 45 minutes after I stopped smoking that I needed a cigarette or that I needed a, a lozenger or I needed a piece of gum. You know, I, it was just so different. It, um, I don't know. It was just really, really different for me. And I kept waiting to have that pain, that craving it didn't happen. No. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm not going to fight with this. But, you know, I also learned a different way of thinking. Yeah. Um, when I would think about a cigarette, which, by the way, you helped me with that, because I thought that thoughts about smoking were a little bit the same as cravings. But when you told me those thoughts couldn't do anything to me, and that that I was in control of those thoughts and that I could just look at them rather than reacting to them, just kind of let them pass, you know, like the passing cars and the, all the tricks that you taught us. Um, I remember just being able to look at that thought and saying, oh, I'm having a thought about smoking, but I don't smoke anymore. I'm a non-smoker. And then I was able to dismiss it from my mind. And it was wonderful. I mean, I struggled with this for years. I can't tell you, I am free now. I don't have to make sure I have enough cigarettes to get through the day, or I don't have to plan at my uh, grandchildren's uh, football games, yeah. uh, how I'm gonna sneak out and smoke. Or I mean, I am not a slave to that drug anymore. And I cannot thank you enough. I mean, there are no words. There and I know that you taught me how. Yes, and uh, well, I thank you for sharing that because so that was a key moment for you when you when you realized that you can control those thoughts and you don't have to resist them or react to them, but you can just acknowledge them and handle them in a different way. So that was a yeah. big moment for you. It was huge. And, you know, sometimes I would talk back and say, no, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not going to smoke. I don't have to smoke. Sometimes I would just think it in my head if I didn't want somebody else to hear me, yeah. you know. I, it was just like, okay, I'm in charge here, not the cigarette. Yes, yes. And um, and what was the moment when when you knew that you really, really wanted to quit smoking? You you mentioned that you that you started trying to quit when you were 28 years old. Was that when you um, realized that you really, really wanted to quit? And can you? Do you remember, can you recall what was the uh, the thing that pushed you towards that direction? I remember thinking always that I could quit anytime. Mm, okay. And then when I was 28, I decided I wanted to quit. Um, I was dating somebody that didn't smoke and it was just really inconvenient and I thought to myself, well, I'm going to quit smoking. And then that's when it started. That's when I started. And I realized I was um, addicted, you know, which <sighs> you hate to think, but you know, that's, that's what it was. And uh, that's when I started looking for something to help me to stop. And, you know, I, I went through periods where I gained weight, trying to stop lots of weight. Really? And um, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. What happened then? 
that was really bad. Um, I was able to quit for nine months once chewing the gum, but I also um, increased my eating. Yes. And it was like, and I gained probably 30 pounds and I felt miserable and unhappy with myself. And my addictive mind told me that um, if I started smoking again, the weight would come off. Yes, yes. And of course I believed it. I wanted any reason, any yes. reason to, to start again. And I, I so I did. And, um, but this time I did gain a little bit of weight. You know, it's been a year. Um, but losing weight is one thing I know how to do. Quitting smoking is not something I knew how to do. So I made up my mind when I started your program that I would not use willpower. Yes. You know, that I would use mind power. Yes. And I um, also made up my mind that if I gained some weight, that um, I would worry about it later. I wanted the whole year to pass. Yeah. Because I want seasons to pass, you right. know, because 43 years or 44 years of smoking uh, 20 to 30 times a day wasn't going to go away like that. Yes. You know, I knew that um, I needed to get through all the holidays mm. without smoking. I need to get through all the seasons. I needed to get through feelings of grief without smoking and anger and I had to learn all new coping mechanisms. Yes. So I knew that once the year passed, that I would be okay. And actually I was really okay before the year passed, but I did notice that um, when summer came and it was time for me to plant my garden and everything, I, um, I thought, oh, I used to take little breaks and smoke. Yeah. You know, so I would take little, breaks and you know drink a cold glass of water or look at my phone or you know I had to find different ways to cope and and I did and now that a year's up Nasia I don't even want to smoke I I want nothing to do with it I don't like it when I mean I don't I'm not rude or anything but if somebody else is smoking that smell bothers me a lot I can't believe that I walked around smelling like that you know, one of the things that helped me was when you said to make it personal, um, you know, to think about how nice it would be to have fresh breath and white teeth and uh, skin that um, yes. glowed again and just being able to sit through a long conversation with a good friend and not have that idea in my head keep popping in, I need to go smoke. And you know, fully present in, in the conversation. Yeah, to be fully happening. present. Yeah. That's exactly, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And how did you, how did your health and um, your physical appearance improve? Because you look great, by the way, but I don't know how it was before, before you quit smoking. Have you noticed any of those changes? Yeah, lots of changes. I mean, I, um, first of all, my health is so so much better i used to get bronchitis frequently really oh yeah especially in the winter um and it would take me a long time to get over a cold but i never got copd i was very blessed i'm very blessed that i still have my health and that it's all still very good uh, my blood pressure came down um i care more about my appearance i i really do i I just take better care of myself all around. I like to walk now. I'm I'm just like a healthier person and a happier. How a happier do you do? How, so how has your mental health been impacted uh, since you stopped smoking? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I, I do have some problems with anxiety and depression. And um, my mental health has really... I mean, my temper, my mood, everything's kind of evened out now that I'm not having those um, nicotine cravings, that up and down that you go through throughout the whole day with. I'm much more even. I feel like I'm um, definitely happier and um, 
so much less nervous. Um, I just, you know, I knew it would help my physical health, yeah. but I had no idea how much it was going to help me emotionally. And it's so important. And and you said you you were struggling with anxiety and depression anyway, like in your adult life, and you still have right. no improvement right. after quitting smoking. In your mental health, I do have improvement. That's I, I do. It, it's it's amazing to me that that change could create a change in my mental health as well. I mean, I, I do feel, I just feel better. I feel better about myself. You know, that there's a certain um, stigma to smoking now, you know, people that smoke, they sometimes they feel guilty and they feel looked yeah. down upon. And it's so nice not to have that feeling anymore. And I, I try to help anybody that asks me, you know, I call them up right away if, if I, you know, if, if they, if they want me to help them, I, I want to give it back. Yeah. You know, I want to give it back. I want, I want to help other people to feel better too. Because I, I mean, that addiction, it has such a control over me. I never thought that I would stop. Now my parents both smoked and all while I was growing up, my siblings and I said, no way, we're never going to smoke. It smells terrible. It's awful, you know. Um, but uh, I was the only one that actually started smoking of my other um, siblings. Yeah. But I, I'm just so happy to be done with it. Yeah, and, and this is so important um, about mental health because many people, many people, um, especially those who are already struggling with anxiety and depression and other mental health uh, struggles, they, they fear so much that without smoking, things will get worse. And this can become, this is a limiting belief, but it can be so real and such a huge barrier to taking the step and allowing the time for your mental health to heal a little bit and quitting smoking does help so the fact that you're sharing this is so important for uh, for people to hear that um, quitting smoking helps our mental health it does it it truly does and I you know I was on medication and I still am just mm -hmm. an antidepressant but um, I um, I thought that I might not be able to handle like really like having an argument with my husband or, you know, a disagreement with someone or um, I just thought I would get worse. Like you said, I had, what, what was I going to do if I couldn't go out and smoke? Yes. Well, you have to think about that. And in your program, you talk about thousands of things that you can do besides go outside and smoke, you know? And, and I wrote them all down and I, I have them written everywhere in my house. I have sticky notes on, especially mirrors. I love that. <laughs> you know, with, with all your wise little sayings on them. I love them all. I read them all the time. Amazing. And it's, it's, it's changed my life in so many ways, uh, Nasia. But I, I love my little sayings. I love them. <laughs> what is one that you that uh, you absolutely love and it's at the top of your of your head that you think may help someone else um before we started talking there was one thing that i really wanted to say i mean when we first started talking before you started recording it yeah um i i think it's really really it was really a game changer for me when I realized that I could change the way I think, that, that I could look at my thoughts without, um, without really listening to them mm. and I could just let them pass and do nothing. That day that you said that, I realized, and I tried it, I tried it, that day that I tried it, I thought, oh my gosh, this really works. You know, I, that day changed, turned everything around. That was the day that I knew that I could do this. 
and I don't know if I'm saying it right or not. But you are, you are, and and actually, what you're saying is really at the core of this method, because learn <laughs> how to change our the way we think and perceive and challenge what we believe is real about that crutch, that addiction is. Uh, it's really the key to breaking free. How to do that is the method shows how to do that. But what needs to be done is to change the thinking. And it starts with understanding that it is possible. So what you're saying is really at the core of um, the effectiveness of this method is why it works, because it does that. So right oh, on that's, point. Yes. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You get it. And I, I that is why it worked. <laughs> But, you know, of course, everyone has their own um, things that they they take the most out of the whole process. Uh, someone may have maybe helped more by their replacement habit. Another person may be helped more about, you know, realizing or wh what am I doing? Uh, but changing how we think about our thoughts and and what we experience is it's really an important aspect of this. So, yeah, they... it is. And like you said, um changing your anxious feelings about stopping to smoke into um excitement that was so true yeah and like you said you know you can do it in other areas of your life too yeah always you I, know i found it very nervous <laughs> yeah right yeah. now but i I'm excited to be here and, and kind of switching over to that feeling has helped me to talk more. Yeah, and it works. It works. <laughs> it I, and, and Terry, you said that um, this time you promised yourself that you would uh, quit smoking without using willpower. And, right. I, and we know that this is a controversial topic when i when i say that oh you don't need willpower to quit smoking sometimes people tell me what are you talking about there is no way you don't need willpower so i want to ask you how did you quit smoking without willpower <laughs> i'll tell you nasia when you first said that i thought there is no way i can quit smoking without willpower yeah and i thought what is she talking about what is she trying to get me to do yeah and um, I think I just quit fighting against it. I just started like feeling the feelings, letting them pass. I didn't white knuckle it anymore. I just looked at it. I just was, I just let it be. I just looked at it and I knew it couldn't hurt me. The thoughts that I was having I finally realized that nothing terrible was going to happen. I, I mean, the fear of pain is the worst that, you know, I didn't have that because I knew I could sit there and look at the craving until it passed and I would be fine. And I didn't have to grab a bag of M&Ms or, you know, I didn't have to um, be irritable with my family. I could just sit quietly and not use willpower. I mean, I just kind of relaxed. It was it was good, but it took me a while to figure that out. Great. You know, because it it did. I mean, it's hard. It's a hard concept to do something without willpower. To emphasize something you said, um, you you said the first thing and the important thing is that you let go you allowed yourself to let go so the first step to not using willpower is i uh, allow yourself to release the need to use it and then yeah. which is so important you said it in a really nice way so i wanted to emphasize that just allow yourself that you don't need to use it and then more things open up as to how you can deal with situations and what we are learning in the program is to use mind power instead and um, you also mentioned it before what in your view is using mind power how did you experience or how did you um, get yourself to use mind power instead of willpower I would um, 
just kind of immediately go into what I had learned. Mm -hmm. And um, I would start intellectualizing it a little bit and thinking, um, I don't need a cigarette. You know, I, I will be fine if I don't smoke one. And, you know, I would start using logic mm -hmm. and um, deep breathing exercises were so helpful for me during that time too, when yeah. I was first learning it you know, to be able to relax and to, um, and mind think that you mentioned before, like letting the, the thoughts and everything pass without interacting yeah, with it. Me. Just, just be mm -hmm. just, you know, just, just kind of relax and let your body feel what it's feeling and it's not going to hurt you. And, um, it, it was good once I finally was able to do that. It was very good. Yeah. And, and it has helped me in other areas of really, my life. I wanted to ask yeah. you about that. So um, now that you you went through the Siviki program, you quit smoking, you are a happy non-smoker. Looking back, how did quitting smoking with this process impact your life in other ways? Well, now I'm, I'm not a different, I'm the same person, but I know that I can do things. I just, I feel like I can do more. I can, like even with the eating, for example, I can think about it and I can think, and I can, I can let that thought pass. If I'm sitting on the couch watching TV and I'm thinking about the uh, cookies in the kitchen for my grandchildren, yeah. I can think, <laughs> you know, I can, can take that thought out of my mind and let it pass. I mean, that was a skill I never had before. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's or just an example, but my life is better on so many levels that's 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 great and yeah mindfulness allowing things to pass is such an important skill that uh, that helps a lot um and you said you 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 know you can do more things and that you you can achieve more things what else did quitting smoking teach you well it it made me more active you know i want to i want to go outside i want to walk i want to you know i want to I'm, I'm much, I'm outside so much more. I just feel um, free is the only way I can really put it. And I, I feel like um, I, I just walking up steps is easier. Walking anywhere is easier. Um, doing anything is easier. I'm not afraid to try new things beca because I, you know, I'm crocheting now. I'm crocheting. And that seems like a little thing, but, you know, I, I watched the YouTube videos and I figured it out and I can, I can do that with my hands. I just, it, I don't know. I just, I'm different. I look at things differently and I feel much more in control of my life. So important. Yeah. yeah. Because when we smoke, we feel like smoking helps us be in control. But in reality, quitting smoking and being free of it is what allows us to be in control of our life. So you are more in control. You are free. That's huge. Your physical health has improved. Your mental health as well. That's, uh, that's amazing, Terry. And um, when you... So before you decided to, to join this program and when you first... Um, found this method what attracted you what made you choose this the CBQ method over over something else over another approach I'm curious well, it, it just um, was so different and it was I knew a little bit about cognitive behavioral therapy because I was a psychiatric nurse for many many years what I and, did not know that yeah yeah I was that that yeah. was what I did and to make a living I was a psychiatric nurse so 
Wow. Um, I've seen many changes over the years yeah. in, um, in, in psychiatry and um, the cognitive behavioral therapy is something that I've seen work mm -hmm. and um, they're starting to use it more and more. And when I saw that your program had that, I thought, this is for me. This is what I've been looking for. And it was. So I mean, you, so you knew you felt you, you knew it was right for you. I knew and I prayed, you know, and I did. I did ask God, to please, please help me find a way to quit smoking and, you know, not to be um, overly religious or anything, but be, be next. To be, be yourself. Okay. All right. But I, I did. I, I came across it on the internet and I read about it and I watched some of your uh, YouTube videos and I immediately knew this was going to work. Amazing. And, and you, and you committed to the process because I think this is so important to point out that you, you committed to it. You committed to seeing this through to doing your best, to doing the exercises to the best of your ability, to um, to setting up your environment with those post-it notes, those reminders, so you can uh, always be in that mindset that this is what I'm doing, this is what I need to be thinking about. So what advice would you have for someone who, let's say, has the program, but they're afraid to start it, or they have this fear of, oh, it, it, fear of success or fear of failure? What advice? would you give to that person? Well, I think um, there was a little girl in, in one of your, um, you know, in the uh, Facebook group that said mm -hmm. something about she realized she was afraid of succeeding. And I thought, you know what? That is so true yes. with so many of us, you know? I mean, because that's a big part of what we do every single day, you know, what am I going to do instead? It's, it's a little bit scary. So, I mean, I understand that way of thinking and, um, uh, you just have to, um, one thing you said that always stuck in my mind was that you have to make a firm commitment with yourself that this is what you're going to do and that no matter what happens, you know, whether there's a terrible tragedy or, you know, you gain a whole bunch of weight or um, your husband and you aren't getting along or no matter what happens, you're not going to let it stop you from succeeding. And I found that once I made that commitment it was easier. Mm. And I, I would tell anyone not to be afraid to start, but I would tell them to make that commitment with yourself, you know, that they would never let anything make them take even one puff because it leads to many more, you know, that um, you would figure out a way to cope with life. Um, you would figure it out. Just have belief in yourself that you can figure this out, that you can do this. Because believe me, if I can do this, anybody can do it. I really was not a fan of smoking, but I was really addicted to it and thought that I enjoyed it for a long time before I realized that it wasn't under my control anymore. So I, I mean, I feel better in everything I do in my mental, physical. I mean, I, I, would, I would tell anyone it's worth any pain and suffering you have. But if you do it Nausea's way, you might wake up the next day and it doesn't even bother you. Because <laughs> it's what to me. Yeah. So. God bless you. Thank you.
thank you for, thank you thank you terry and thank you for for sharing that i agree that the commitment is everything and if at the beginning the commitment of quitting smoking seems too big just commit that you will see it through and do your best and then step up to the commitment that nothing nothing can stop me from succeeding nothing and no one so absolutely it's important exactly and when you said that i knew i knew i had to make that commitment with myself and mean it yeah and you did i did um, and and Terry, what would you say to someone who um, does not believe that quitting smoking can be easy? Because you used to be that person as well. You never believed okay. it would be easy, and it was. So, what would you say to someone like that, or someone who um, is not sure if uh, if this program or this method can make it easy? Because they've tried other things, and you know it's. It was never the case. So what would be your take on that? I tell them, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Try it. I mean, don't have in your mind that you're trying it, but have in your mind that you're going to do every single step, every as best of your ability, to the best of your ability, so that um, just take it one day at a time, or how many ever days you need on each step. Um, but I wouldn't drag it out too long. But I, I would absolutely tell them, you have nothing to lose. I mean, if it's the money, you make it back in a month. I mean, cigarettes are so expensive now. You know, they're, I was spending like $90 a week, if you can believe that. And... Um, your program is very inexpensive compared to that. I mean, I can't tell you the money I've saved, but anyway, that's another story. But I would tell them it's still to important, do- It's important though, right? It's still important. Because oh, it is. it's an investment in yourself that you, you make it back and then it's everything else you gain, your health, your freedom uh, from taking that. But, you know, that's yeah. important too. Yeah, you have nothing to lose. I mean, try it, do it, you know, just- Take it seriously. Do the steps. Write down, you know, your letter on your quit day. Sit on your porch or whatever you're doing and smoke your last cigarette. And, you know, read your letter. And it's it's amazing. Um, <laughs> I was reading my letter in this. I was on my porch and this little bird, it was a little tiny bird, like a wren maybe. And it flew down and it wasn't afraid of me. And I was reading out loud and I was smoking and I might've even been crying. So that bird should have been scared, <laughs> but it wasn't. And um, it just sat there while I read the letter and it just looked at me and it was so weird. And I thought, you know, that that was a sign, you know, that I was. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it, it was weird. Yeah. I understand. I understand. And that, that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And so someone should go for it and they should, they have nothing to lose. They should just go for it because I would have never believed it. Yeah. And my life is different now. I'm 63, but I feel like I'm 50. You know, I just, I have energy again. I have life in me again. I, play with my grandchildren we have fun so much fun outside and you have to try it you just owe it to yourself you know the, the games that big tobacco played on us it was such a trick it was such a bad trick and uh we can't let them win i love that absolutely absolutely and Terry, thank you thank you so much for uh for, for everything you shared, for your, your journey, your experience, your advice, your, your perspective. Um, I, I, I was really happy 
you were here and your mindset and your outlook and your your commitment and your groundness around this topic it's so inspiring and i i am sure that everything you you shared will uh, will help other people because you also shared a lot of practical things that someone can take and they can actually implement so i'm really really thank you for being open and honest and sharing all that you're so very welcome and I, i'm so glad you think i did okay with it because it was really important to me well uh, i think and you know people will who are watching this uh, please leave a comment below and let terry and i know what you took away because i'm sure it's a lot of things but let us know exactly what you're taking away that uh, can help you in your quit smoking journey. We're looking forward to reading your thoughts and your comments. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Thank you.